Have you ever had one of those teaching moments that you say, damn, I think I'll never forget that? Well, I'm about to tell you mine. It was spring 2008, I was studying architecture at the London South Bank University. And during a project crit, I was presenting our teamwork, one of my tutors, Michael Robbins, interrupts me and in front of all my colleagues says, Fabio, you will never be a great architect. You might be an architect, but not a great architect. I am not sure what my reaction was. I was not expecting that, especially because I was doing a lot of work and an, I was a straight A student. It took me a while to digest the whole situation. Then I asked him, what do you mean? Fabio, you're too pragmatic and this whole course of architecture seems like a joke to you. Yes, you're intelligent, charming, funny, but you're not an idealist. Your project has no ideals and the whole thing is dry and it has no value. And you might as well not have done it because, well, as I said, it has no value. To be honest, I remember the following minutes being some of the most uncomfortable ones in my life. I was so mad that I wanted to break things. I remember I was like, Ugh. I took my stuff and went to the campus gym and hit the bench press because otherwise I would have done something stupid. Later that night, I received an email from the same teacher asking me to meet him the following day to talk. Of course, I was crushed, but I knew that it was in my best interest to clear the air and move on. I met him again the day after and we started to have a conversation about ideas, ideals and idealism and what all that meant in the field of architecture and how, if I really wanted to make it as an architect, had to take this aspect a lot more serious. The conversation went on for a full two hours, but the point that he made that really hit base with me is that if one day I wanted to work with clients that were willing to pay me premium fees, enabling me to realize my own creative vision, I actually needed to start developing that creative vision as soon as possible. And in a way, I had to make that sort of like a life mission. He was right. I had no vision. Up to that moment, studying architecture was only a way for me to climb up the social ladder and maybe get a better job. I was doing it wrong. Now pause this video and ask for yourself, as an artist, what is my vision? Still thinking about it? Yeah, I know. He then advised me to read a couple of books from Abraham Maslow, one called The Theory of Human Motivation and another one called Maslow Business Reader. In case you want to read them, do it in the same order. Now, before we proceed with what I've learned from these books, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. I've been working my entire life since the age of six. I've been brought up in a family of workers and my dad taught me that money is earned with hard work. What I've learned later at uni and then later again in my professional career, in a way disrupted my pragmatic approach to work, money, and life in general. And thank God for that, because now that I look at it, it was necessary. You do need to work hard, but more important, you need to work smart. Please do understand that what comes next, you need to approach with a philosophical attitude and open-mindedness. To cut the long story short, Maslow was an influential psychologist of the 20th century, whose work was crucial in defining human needs in modern society. We can assume that he was the first one to theorize existentialism in an industrialized and possibly global economy. Maslow came up with a very simple theory explained with a pyramid diagram that if you have ever read any business book about entrepreneurship, you have probably already heard of. I will try to simplify. At the bottom of the pyramid we find physiological needs such as food, water, air, as well as shelter, clothing, one of course more important than others but still necessary for us to survive altogether. Once these primary needs are fulfilled, moving one step above, you get safety and security. These are very important aspects such as employment, health, family. Once these needs are also fulfilled, you move one step above, where you find love and belongings. Basically, all the personal, social elements need to feel whole as a person, such as friendship or intimacy. One step above Above again, you find self-esteem, confidence, achievement, which are all needs that can only be fulfilled given that you as an individual have achieved all the other previous steps. Now, before we continue with the explanation of the pyramid, one point that I realize a lot of people fail with, especially in artistic discipline, is that many artists 
try to pursue their need for self-esteem without first fulfilling the need for safety and security or for love and belonging, meaning that they try to be artists and monetize with their art before fulfilling their social need for economical stability or sometimes completely forgetting about their social, personal needs. Peace has been observed many times to be one of the biggest causes in work burnouts across many disciplines not only in the creative industry. We might blame capitalism, we might blame the rise of individualism, maybe a non-evolving educational system, in some cases bad parenting, but this would open up a huge discussion which I think it's not necessary for this video. Let's leave the social thing out for now. If you want to be an artist but don't make enough money to do what you love, the best solution to the problem is to get another job and use your free time, your weekends, your evenings, even your lunch breaks to practice, to get better better, to learn more and to build a business or create a career that you would like to have one day. Nevertheless, the priority should always be to put food on the table first. By not understanding this, you put yourself in a position as an artist where you will always have to bend over stupid client requests, accepting terrible paid jobs and doing things that from an artistic point of view make very little sense and add no value to your persona. The problem very often is that people know that they should get another job, but see this as a moral defeat, and in some cases are afraid that getting a different job will kill their careers as artists altogether. This is of course false. If you think that I'm only good at preaching, I will let you know that in order to supply to my artistic career, I have done a whole bunch of different things. I worked in shops, I was a waiter, I was a tour guide, I trained people at the gym. What I did not do was losing focus. Somehow I kept coming back in a way or another to my biggest aspiration, which was of course making cool renders. And mind you, I did not know how I was going to monetize that, but honestly it did not matter because I was financially independent and way too busy to worry about what could have been trying to be an artist at all costs. Now pay attention, the pyramid of Maslow is stopped by the self-actualization step. In short, this step represents the human need to basically give back. One does so much in their life, works really really hard to fulfill all the previous needs, pursue a successful career, maybe build a family, and all of a sudden comes a point when you need again to find some sort of purpose in your life. One way to do so, argues Maslow, is to help others with their lives to reach their full potentials. This is, according to him, also the ultimate business tool, adding value to other people's life. Very often people confuse this step, this need described by Maslow. They think this is only something for those in an elite financial position and assume that only people like Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg can actually achieve self-actualization and give back. This cannot be further from the truth. Maslow suggests that if you allow it for yourself to lower your living standards, try to fulfill your needs with the least material destruction possible, you can work on achieving faster the self-actualization step, therefore fulfilling all the lower needs and finding a higher purpose in both your life and your professional career. In other words, a person that is really dedicated to reach a certain goal should not be distracted by small-term satisfactions, such as buying a new car, going on an expensive holiday, buy trendy clothes. I remember when reading this, I thought to myself, this is some sort of hippie, existential nonsense. But then I looked deep into the topic and did some basic research. It turns out that some of the greatest entrepreneurs of this century managed to get successful by desiring very little and by learning to live a life filled with purpose other than with material things that only have monetary and momentary value. Think of Steve Jobs, for instance, or as already mentioned, Bill Gates. Very low profile people that despite not being perfect, have done and achieved so much for humanity. But of course, TV and on the internet, we only see the money stuff, so it is easy to get distracted. So as artists, what can we learn from this? Maslow argues that in order for you to live a fulfilling professional life, you need to integrate self-actualization into your work. In other words, you need to find your purpose, you make that purpose an integrating part of your job, and doing this will give you an edge over any of your competitors. Also, according to Maslow, once you do get into that self-actualization state, you will more likely find and surround yourself with like-minded people, 
that hopefully will share your vision and support you in your endeavors. As a consequence, you will more likely attract clients that have either reached self-actualization or are working on it. And they will come to you because of who you are and because of what you do, but not because of how much you cost. And that, my artist friends, is the ultimate goal. My name is Fabio Palvelli. Thanks a lot for watching.